Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to SSG Speaks, the podcast that takes you inside the walls of Camelot. Meet the knights that made Sword and Shield Gaming what it is. So pour yourself a flask of your favorite mead and join us for an inside look at the fine folks that sit at the round table. Welcome to SSG Speaks. I am SSG Mania filling in for Gambits. He's unavailable tonight. And as always, we have J-Man here. J-Man, say hi. Hello. Hi. And for episode 14, we are interviewing SSG Kaz. Kaz, say hi. Howdy. We can't follow directions. You just said to say hi, and neither of us could do that. I know, right? Off to a great start. You know, he's a rebel, with or without a cause. I don't know. You be the deciding factor, Kaz. Oh, totally without. (laughs) So for those of you who know, Kaz is one of the uh, eldest members of SSG. How's that feeling for you? You know, I always get grief for being the old man, and I am like the sixth oldest person in the clan there are five other people ahead of me but i always get the grief and you got to start right in right at the beginning of the episode don't you i see how it's gonna be hostile interview wise you're so wise that's why yeah right wise beyond your years Mm -hmm. so (laughs) well uh, to be fair you were in a clan called gaming you know the geezers so maybe that's why maybe it's your legacy that you brought yeah there you go from the geezers keep digging jay keep digging (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you were part of the geezers what was your gamer tag back there i think it was something like uh, victim uh, victor. victim yeah victim victor i was uh, i enjoy the alliteration on that one yeah so um speaking of which with clans and stuff uh when and how did you find out about ssg uh well i was part of the uh allies for the win group that has been oft spoken of on ssg speaks so mm-hmm. i was hanging around the the TTL Midworld forums around the same time everybody else was. And uh, I got snapped up by Cirque de Geezers while uh, the rest of the allies for the win were still wandering around kind of claim- clanless. And so I was with Cirque de Geezers for a couple years. And uh, then Jay started SSG. And I remained with Cirque for a while, but ended up spending all my time playing with SSG instead of the Cirques. So eventually it made sense to just jump ship. It was lots of begging, is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how you guys got me in, right? That's right. <laughs> uh, the gamer tag, though, Casual. I mean, Victor Victor seems nice with the alliteration. I don't know if there's a story behind that. Feel free to share. Um, but where's Kaz coming from, also? Uh, the 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 Victor Victor was the guys I was playing a lot with had a have a like a a history of self deprecating gamer tags like. My uh, really good friend Chris, his gamer tag is Nelson's right arm. And Admiral Lord Nelson of the British Navy lost his right arm in a battle. So, you know, the the victim victor fit right in with that trend of this group of guys, that real-life friends that I played with that all had the, the self-deprecating tags. Kazaril I mean. comes from a book who I, I have never actually heard the author's name pronounced out loud, and I've never heard the title of the book pronounced out loud, so I don't actually know how to pronounce either of them correctly. <laughs> but it's Lewis McMaster Bajold's The Curse of Chalion, or Kalion, or I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But the lead character in that is named Kazaril, and the character really resonated with me. So that's where that one came from. That book title sounds like a mouthful. It does. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so so with your your history so i mean i joked about it earlier but like but you you know you were one of the f- i don't want to say few but you were one of the the most of the ggn of all the clans you were one of the people i feel like really put a an effort like a foot forward to kind of play with other clans and to make an effort to to get mixers and, and things going like it, has that always been your style or were you just, was it something like, did you want, were you trying to get GGN participation or were you just trying to like get games with, with good people and that GGN was like a good thing to, to do that or a good resource? Well, that, I mean, that's why I jumped into the GGN was to find like-minded gamers like we all did. So we wouldn't have to, mm-hmm. you know, go it alone in the wilds of Xbox live. When I joined the Cirques, they kind of needed community outreach. And so that's the role I jumped into. Cause that's, what they needed and that evolved into putting to putting together some pretty crazy events okay yeah because we used to have so many mixers back in the day yeah. so, like i mean especially with halo i mean you know all the halo 
mixers and customs and you know really this was like the the heyday of halo 3 i guess like yeah. i i don't know i mean i guess we did it in halo 2 but i feel like with halo 3 and forge and custom games i feel like really opened up more i guess than than certainly in halo 2 and stuff like that but yeah guys do you i mean you mentioned the mixers and all the crazy games and the community outreach is there one that sticks out uh in particular yeah yeah, absolutely. I I I was kind of waiting for the uh, "What's your proudest gaming moment?" question for this one, but uh, we'll jump <laughs> well, into it that. early. <laughs> Circtacular Four. That oh, okay. was a two-week-long Halo Three contest, comprised of like I don't know, fifteen or eighteen events, something like that. We had twenty-five teams of four people each from probably 16 or 17 different clans from throughout the good Na- good game network and others as well and a few teams of randoms thrown together like J-Man was on a a mixed team what was it uh Margu Rushman <laughs> so we all had our own crazy names and stuff <laughs> yeah yeah i remember you were in with a couple guys from BSG and one unaffiliated mm-hmm. gamer from the TTL lobby i think and you you mashed together all your gamer tags for Margu Rushman. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that uh, I, I, I wrangled 100 people for this two-week event and, you know, kept track of scores. I found or forged all the maps, playtested all the game types, and it was, it, it was awesome. I think it probably took about eight weeks off my lifespan, but it was <laughs> awesome, and I would totally do it again. Yeah, that was great. I love the big ones. I was, I'm really disappointed you didn't say it was like the Knights vs. Recruit games I've hosted. Did you have a hundred people at those though? I mean, no, no. I think I had like <laughs> I rotated ten people in the lobby, and at most there was like twenty people who signed up. So, but that's all right. I understand that you don't like me, Kaz. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I I am actually continually attack. sad about the fact that Jay was the only one from SSG that was in the Circular because I, you know, it's my fondest gaming memory, and none mm-hmm. of the knights were there for it. It's it's such a drag because I want to, you know relive the there's none of the allies for the win people that were there so nobody nobody like spandex or no no you were 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 the only one from the allies for the win group who formed a team i I think everybody was afraid of the time commitment or something because it was i mean it was two weeks of practically non-stop but i mean we're all on halo every night anyway so what difference Mm -hmm. does it make yeah well because there was a there was a time like you know between allies for the win when i was when it was I really felt that I wasn't going to get into TTL or anything like that. And so right before I joined or right before we started SSG, I really looked at, at, at BSG at buddy system gaming. Cause I had a bunch of friends that started that and left to go do that. And so I went over there and I was kind of poking my head around. And so I don't know if that was in that same time frame or not, but I, yeah. I had kind of yeah, it was. decided that like, Hey, maybe I should go try and apply for BSG. And then after like a month or two, I was like, you know what? I think maybe I'm going to try to do this own thing and wrangle some of the allies for the win crew. So, yeah. So I don't know if that had anything to do with the, the BSG focus, focus of it. So, I mean, it but who knows? Sense. Yeah. But it was like, it was intense. Cause there was, you know, playing all those games and all the days and, and everything. I mean, it was just so cool that we could even do something like that oh, totally. back then. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, uh, we've talked about it ad nauseum, but the fact that we had one system, one unifying game, but, and the time, right? Like, right. It, right. It being, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, like really helped that we had the potential time commitment, you know, between jobs and family and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'll say it right was pretty now, sweet. I, I would not be able to commit to a two week uh, gaming session. Of yeah, some right. Yeah, I, I don't think many of us could anymore. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, you've said that you've been uh, part of our clan with the Cirque de Geezers. Um, well, what makes SSG stand out? What makes us different? Uh, it, it, it's the same thing everybody says. It, it's it's an online family, you know? I mean, Cirque de Geezers was a, was a really small clan, and I definitely trusted all them, and we got pretty close, and we even had a a, a little land with you know all of ten or twelve people, but uh, the fact that SSG has gotten as big as it has, has lasted as long as it has, and hasn't lost that that extra that extra bit of whatever it is that the special sauce, you know. I mean, yeah, we're a gaming clan, but there's something deeper there, and there's 
the 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 bonds between us are slightly more than just online gaming buddies Mm -hmm. yeah and i feel like it's something you know i don't know like i feel like it was there from like allies for the win and i think it like it started there and it really just kept growing like we just kept adding people to our little circle yeah like i like and i don't know i don't know i i mean i guess it was just all of our personalities or, or something that when we got together but it just something clicked and we just had a lot of fun and we all had we were just like-minded in the type of games we wanted to play and how we wanted to play right we were very um team focused you yeah. know people would we would share weapons and oh you want the you you drive the vehicles we'll get this gun i'll guard the base like i'll do i don't know like we never had any i mean certainly nothing that stands out like we never fought over the sniper rifle or who was driving the warthog or who was doing that you know i mean like it was kind of like oh hey you want to take turns or I'll, you know, we'll do this or I'll be here. Um, like it just, I don't know. We just, we just meshed and we could, and it was just so weird. It was like a, like a, like a sports team where Vic would leave and somebody else would show up and then we would, we would just slot him in like, and there wasn't a hitch, you know, we would just reorganize whatever we needed to. And it, it just seemed to work out really well. Yeah. And, so. and the, the other thing I liked, which is, you know, part of why I left the Cirques they, they were way more focused on winning and being competitive. I mean, not, you know, master theory competitive or anything like that, you know, competitive <laughs> for old people. But uh, SSG was always about, yeah, winning's fun. Let's try to win. But even if we don't win, we're going to have a great time playing. And that's, I mean, that's why we should all be gaming, to be having a good time. A hundred percent agree. That, yep. That's the, the, the main point, in my opinion, is winning secondary i mean and honestly in most cases it's winning's a side effect of having a good time in the game itself yeah yeah you know? absolutely 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. and that's not like you know you're in a lobby with a bunch of your friends and we're all just shooting the shit and having fun and talking and all of a sudden we're like oh we won that game like you know it's like you don't even realize <laughs> yeah like oh shit <laughs> like the game's over like we just won like oh that was the last flag we needed to cap like oh okay you know it's like you know, it's just fun. And, and I don't want to, um, you know, like I said, I feel like it really grew out of that because that, what, that's not, and I think to your point, Kaz, like it's not just an experience of allies for the win. Like as of now, like everybody in SSG, everybody we bring in is just part of that, that group. Unfortunately, if, like the new people and, you know, I say new people, but you know, this is new since like Halo three, but um, you know, they don't have, we don't have a unifying game that, you know, where we have the option to like, slot people in and do other things just because the lobby sizes are smaller and like all that kind of stuff. But, but yeah, I think like as we've, when we've had the lands and stuff, like we go in and we meet people and like, sure, it's weird the first time we talk to somebody or see somebody in person. But when you've been playing with somebody for three years, five years, 10 years, you know, you're like, Oh shit. Like it's so awesome to meet you in person. And then that weirdness goes away. And then, and that's just a good time. Just have fun. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. We just have fun. So yeah, the main weirdness definitely comes from the fact that, when you hear someone refer to you with your gamer tag, you're used to them being over the microphone. And when they do it in person, like it just doesn't register the same sometimes. <laughs> that, that, that was actually the hardest thing for me at the Lands. I'm like, do, do I call these people by their name or their gamer tag? And so the whole time I just ended up, you know, jumping back and forth between first names and gamer tags and never being mm-hmm. sure which was the right one. Oh man. I remember uh, I went to the Chicago land and Kaz, I believe you were there as well. Yep. It was a really good time. Yep. Um, who was it? Marvel. He he was there. He was a great guy. Um, and he's trying to get my attention. I'm paying attention to whatever game other people are playing. And he leans in. He's like, Mania. 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 <laughs> I'm not even registering. So, like, oh, shit, that's me. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's definitely weird. I'm looking forward to a time where we can get together again post-pandemic. Definitely. And uh, have another one. I'm going to do everything I can to make it. Yeah, we're getting on the other side of it, hopefully. But I think, you know, like we do that now. I think, I don't know if it's, if it depends on the person, but, you know, there's certain people that, and maybe because it depends on what's easier to say, right? Is it easier to say their gamer tag? Is it easier to say their first name? Um, however it works out or how you're, com- how comfortable you are with that specific person, right? Um, because I, I think 100% no one has ever called me by my first name. Like everybody's just called me Jay because it's just easier to say, yeah, like, syllable wise and yeah. everything else. Yeah. So it just, uh, you helps know, that it just, your name starts with J too. Yeah, 
So, and like my family, even like my parents have like, that's where my gamer tank came from. Like my parents have always called me Jay, like growing up. So it was like, so for me, it was fairly easy, you know, when in game and in person and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it is, there's that kind of weirdness when you meet somebody. And I think sometimes it changes depending, right? If we're in public or right. private, you know, right. cause you don't want to be out in public going, Hey, spandex, <laughs> Hey, spandex. <laughs> depending on people's gamer tags. So, you know, yeah. um, so what do you think your most m- memorable, th- did we already hit that one? The most memorable time in SSG is in SSG has got to be the mm-hmm. lands. Definitely. The lands. Yeah. So how many have you been to then? I was at the original tiny one in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. That was only what, seven, eight people, something like that. Yeah, probably. And then I was in Chicago and I was in Atlanta. Did not make it to Vegas, but I, I made it to the other three. So, Nice. nice. I remember seeing you take a shot of Patron in Chicago. <laughs> that was a good time. Several, and I won 20 even. bucks off it. <laughs> More than one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, so what do you do for a living, Cass? How do you make your money? I work in the records department of a corporate law firm. I basically do uh, QA for client matter intake. So is it like a really dark? basement dungeon that you're just like crammed in all day <laughs> behind the cage like, checking out just, evidence we we uh <laughs> yeah. we we did we do sort of have a cave i don't interact with the rest of the firm as much as i should because we are behind a locked door because <laughs> we gotta maintain the security of the physical files as well and even though i deal with the electronic stuff not the physical stuff i'm for some reason always in the cave too but <laughs> Well, it's it's no secret within uh, within SSG, but any time I write any single thing, it has to be approved by CAS for <laughs> for consistency, for spelling, for cohesiveness, for literally anything. Because if you've heard me talk, you know how aloof I am, and so it's way worse, especially in my spelling within uh, in the text. So I always have to pass everything off to CAS because I'm like, hey, can you make this sound like like it sounds in my head? So I, 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 like I got to get idiot. I got to get some value for that English degree that's doing me no good. You know, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so with you, we're focusing a little bit outside of gaming, uh, which is great. Do you have another hobby outside of, of video games? It's funny. I was I was talking to somebody about this a few months ago. And I came to the realization that I am a dyed-in-the-wool gamer through and through, without a doubt. If I'm not playing video games or watching Netflix, in non-pandemic times, I'm getting together with big groups of friends and playing board games. And if I'm not playing board games, I'm playing D&D and role-playing games. So my hobbies are all games. All games all the time, man. That's like right up my alley. (laughs) We got a D&D game starting up here soon, too. Yes, indeed. That makes sense. Looking forward to it. Yeah, oh, good. Good. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I had a buddy at work, and he was um, he's like a good old, uh, I don't know, like a good old country boy. Like he he he's got land and he's got property. He, uh, when we got off work, he's like, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the the pond. I'm gonna take my kids fishing. We're gonna ride our ATVs. You know, we're gonna I'm gonna go duck hunting. You know, he's all this like outdoorsy stuff. He's like, man, anytime you want to come, he's like, you know, you're you're welcome. Like you know, with yourself or your family or anybody. And I was like, man, that's just not me. <laughs> I was like, he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, he's like, Oh, it's a lot of fun. And I'm like, yeah, it's outdoors. And you know, <laughs> you know, in this day and age, it's gotten a lot better since, you know, my like, high school days, which are a lot closer than, than your guys is. Um, but even Whoa. now it's still, <laughs> Jay, it's still true. I mean, Oh, I know. I just had my 20 year high school reunion. So oh, did you go to that? I did. How was it? Um, it was, it was weird. Not, not because of the high school or the reunion. It was just some of the circumstances around it were, were off. Like the, you know, typically like the class president and other people like, you know, they plan and take charge, but then it kind of got taken over by other people and then it got moved. And so then people, some people didn't show up and then we got there and it was just, you know, my high school was, 440 people or something like that for or my class. I'm sorry. My class was like 440 people. So depending on where you're from, like we had a high school discussion on one of our episodes and like Gambo was like, Oh, my class or my high school was 1600 people or something. So, you know, out in California. So it just depends where you're from, but, but 400 something people I, I feel like was a lot. And Mm -hmm. so we had maybe 50 people show up, you know, and it was probably, 
and I think I probably knew 10 of them, I guess, which, I mean, that's a okay percentage, but it's not a whole lot of people to know if you need, if you're going to go walk around and mingle and stuff. So, um, so it was just, and it wasn't really, wasn't any of my friends. It was just people that I kind of vaguely remember, you know? So it was just, it was weird, but, but yeah, 20 years, it just didn't seem like 20 years, even when you walk into those people and, and you're walking around and talking to people, cause it seemed more like, oh, this is like the 10 year, but you're like, man, 20 years. <laughs> it's a long time because it doesn't feel like it was 20 years ago. So I, I haven't been to mine for a couple different reasons. I moved across the country and uh, it's valid. I hung out with mostly the class just below me. Mm. But it, it's funny you talk about class size. My high school graduating class actually broke the school system. We had so many people in it. They had to set up an extra homeroom and it messed everything up. And that's so many people. <laughs> Fifty one. <laughs> we broke the school because there were too many people in my class and they had to scramble for extra teachers for homerooms and <laughs> oh man can you imagine so, just sitting there on the administration guys we need a whole extra room attached to the building now what exactly do we do? <laughs> they actually brought in three prefab classrooms and like tacked them on the back of the gym oh like man, i mean they were literally crazy. they were literally on wheels they were trailers they just brought oh, yeah, them in they, and set them up for us dude that's like little yeah. house on the prairie style yeah, right I, I grew up in a really <laughs> small town if you couldn't tell how many people were in your class mania uh i think we started with 800 some and graduated with wow. 600 some so yeah our we just had a 10 year uh whatever it's called reunion thank you mm-hmm. um and i ended up not going but it was mainly based on principle because I don't think you should have to pay for something like that. And oh, yeah. 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 The admissions was like $50 a person. Mm-hmm. Or if you wanted to bring a spouse, it was 75 And they broke it up in two nights. One where like the adults gather at a bar and hang out. And the other where it's like a family fun game night thing at a bowling alley. Um, and for like both those nights – if you had a family of five, so you, your wife or husband and three kids, uh, it would be like 150 bucks or something. Yeah. That's kind of ridiculous. I thought that was Mm -hmm. so ridiculous. So I just decided not to go. I don't know very many people. Um, I wasn't a fan of high school to be honest, but you know, when you're into D and D magic, the gathering and video games, it (laughs) tends to happen. You find, you find a little click that you can (laughs) fit in with and, and you, Mm -hmm. you, you go with that, you know? (laughs) <laughs> That's why I hung out with the the class beneath me. Nobody in my class played D&D. Yeah, you know, I think it's weird cuz every time, you know, every time video games comes out comes up in in a topic like, you know, even now with with my peers, people my age, um there's still several several friends that I have either work or high school, college, all that kind of stuff and they have, you know, quote unquote like aged out of video gaming. You know, like it's not something they do anymore. They're like, oh yeah, I used to play Halo back in the day, but I don't even own a console. I don't play video games anymore. You know, I don't, I don't know what they do, but, but they, it still has this stigma that I think is ridiculous that like gaming somehow is for kids or it's something that, you know, you do when you're in high school or college or something like that, but then you have to, you know, be done with it or or get rid of it. And certainly SSG and, and all the other clans are a testament against that, you know, because you know, most of us now, I mean, with the exception of some of the younger people are at least 30, you know, yeah. like we're, mm-hmm. you know, we're a, at least a 30 plus That's me. clan with, with some of the, some of the newer, newer people. Um, but yeah, like, like Cass says, I mean, we, we do always joke and give Cass a hard time, but, but, you know, he's not even, you know, the, at the, at the top, right. So you have, um, you know, I don't think we have anybody, uh, well, I guess that's not true, but yeah, we have, you know, we have, we have quite the age range, and it, it, I just don't, I've never liked that stigma that I feel like that, oh, once you hit 30 or 28 or 35, you have to stop playing video games and, I don't know, play golf and go to happy hour. <laughs> like, I don't know, you know, what else you, you can do. But, yeah, mm. so that's always that's always bothered me. Yeah, thankfully it's it seems thing. to be uh, getting better these days, but mm-hmm. primarily in, like, the younger crowd, um, which really just leads to the very cringy statement of, I was just born in the wrong decade. <laughs> like, okay now you're saying you need to be born like later so you'd be young no being an adult's fine just man up and woman up and play video games if you like it like, there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with it yeah there is nothing wrong with that so that being said i've thought about this before if you could uh, kaz if you could be born in any century or decade or any time period 
Would you change it at all? Like, would you go back to medieval times? Or oh, hell no. I would never go back. Anything. If I could go forward, I might give that a try. Sure. But yeah. there's no way. I mean, our quality of life right now is so much better than at any point in the past. Yeah. yeah no. Indoor plumbing. You could not get you know. me to go back. No way. <laughs> Counter. What about you, Mania? Kaz, hold on. I'm going to counterpoint Kaz's uh, not back in the future. If you go back to medieval times, there's a high probability you could stab a guy and get away with it. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're seeing the full picture here. Yes, there is a high probability of that. There's also a high probability if you break your ankle or your wrist, you're dead. Yeah, fair point. Or they'd like <laughs> burn you at the stake because they think you're a witch or something. You yeah, know, who knows, so. yeah. What, what, if what if you if you <laughs> if you're chopping wood to keep yourself warm and you take off a digit, you're probably going to get gangrene and die. <laughs> so yeah. trade-off's not worth it sorry man yeah no that's fair that's fair um honestly if i had to go back i would want to be born probably early 80s late 70s only because that would put my adulthood in the tw- 2000s to 2010 because mm-hmm. that was my favorite time of life Mainly because that's when Halo 3 was like a huge thing, late 2000s. Um, and when I got my most gaming in. But also that could very well be because I was a child and I did not have responsibilities. <laughs> yeah, because Halo 2 came out in 2007, I believe, right? Uh, I, I thought think that was Halo right. 3, Halo 4, or Halo 2 maybe 2004. Yeah, because Halo 2 was 2004 and they were about, I think they were three years apart. So, yeah, I think it was 2007. Halo so 3 been... was 2007. Okay. Yeah, November 9, 2004 for Halo 2. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which I sucked at. I was not a fan <laughs> of that game back in the day. Because of, like, did you did you like the original Halo and you didn't like Halo 2? Uh, no, it was mainly because Halo 2 was my first foray into online gaming. Mm-hmm. And, I and you was... realized just how bad you were? Uh, yeah, like, that's exactly it. <laughs> I, I'm sitting there before online, you know, I'm playing the Halo 2 campaign acting like a badass because I'm, you know, defeating covenants left and right mm-hmm. on easy mode. And then I hop into <laughs> an online session two years later when we finally get uh, good enough internet for it. <laughs> and uh, I get completely wrecked. And I didn't understand the game. Um, there was, I'm pretty sure BXR was in Halo 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know anything about that. So anybody who did it was just a cheap ass who didn't have any skill. <laughs> <laughs> Even though BXR is a very skillful thing to pull off, to yeah. be honest. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I had a uh, I had a pretty similar progression. I played, I got the original Xbox and played a ton of LAN parties, and I definitely played the most of of you know the ten or twelve people that came over for the LAN parties. So I dominated those, and I thought I was hot shit. And man. <laughs> Within the first, like, five days of being online, I'm like, oh, God. Oh, I'm not good at games at all. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the great thing is, is, like, playing online and stuff, it makes you better just naturally, right? So, like, yeah. you take you take that scenario, Kaz, that you had, and you play online, and you get completely wrecked, and you're like, screw this, I'm done. But then you go over to your friend's place to play a LAN, and you do ten times better than you used to do. Yeah, there's um, some truth to that, yeah. So... Mm-hmm. I mean, a little bit of a uh, was it silver lining I'm looking for. So <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, I think for me, like I, I was never and still like I don't have the like the reaction time or, you know, like the headshot skill. But what I the, what I can do is I can get um, like I can learn the maps. Right. So you can you can kind of I can get that can be my advantage. Right. Because if if you took somebody like Toma and you threw me and Toma onto a brand new map that neither of us have played he's going to smoke me, right? Just because he's just way better at, at the FPS games than I am. Um, but, you know, if you throw me into a map of Halo and I'm playing some, you know, level that I've played a thousand times, I can at least hold my own because I can come up with some kind of game plan of, hey, I know this is a this is a thoroughfare that a lot of people traverse, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant here, I'm going to get this weapon, or I'm going to, you know, throw a grenade here and do that so you can kind of, that's kind of my one advantage I've found being a kind of a mediocre gamer, at least if I do map control, weapon control, you know, stuff like that, that kind of helps. Yeah. Oh goodness. Yeah. Here I right thought there, you just same boat. a shotgun. 
Well, yeah, I'm definitely going to grab the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was always my strength in Halo 3, too, was, was knowing the maps really well, knowing the travel lanes, and I I never, like, set timers or anything. Like, uh, who used to do that? Christoph and oh, Napster dude. used to actually oh. set timers. But I just kind of had a good sixth sense of, hey, rockets are going to spawn in the next 30 seconds. Be there, you know? Mm-hmm. People who can control the map, especially the timers of power weapon spawns, I envy those people. I really do. I don't. I don't know, man. Like, I can't. I can't play the game and watch the time. And maybe I'm overcomplicating it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I never actually set a timer or anything. I just sort of had a good sense of it. It was just different timers for Hushi. Different timers for every item, right? From mm-hmm. a from a weapon to a vehicle. But then you also had to know when that thing got picked up. Yeah. You know, because like newer games, you know, like you play Destiny and it says, "Oh, hey, somebody just grabbed the the." they loaded their rocket launcher so you know that the that the heavy ammo just got picked up and they have on-screen timers and stuff now but you know back then you wouldn't know that somebody just picked up the rocket launcher or the sniper or something like that unless a teammate it's happened to see it yeah that's exactly or it was somebody on your team i'll be walking around and i'll be like oh you know what i should check to see if uh rockets spawned and then i get hit in the face with the rocket and i'm like i guess they did (laughs) (laughs) yep they definitely spawned and the other team has them (laughs) that's right like, well, he has one less rocket now, guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, let's get some a little more nostalgia. Kaz, what's the first video game you remember playing? Well, you know, I could tell you, but then uh, you wouldn't know what the hell I'm talking about, and I'd have to send you to Wikipedia. And <laughs> <laughs> my so my grandparents actually had Pong, the very first thing ever. So that's technically the first one, but I had a. Uh, I had an Atari PC, not not a console, but a PC, mm-hmm. and so I played a ton of Star Raiders, and there was also a an above view racing game that I played a ton of, and it was actually a pretty, I can't remember what it was called, but it was a pretty awesome game for the time because it incorporated a track builder. You could you could build your own tracks for it. Oh, that is cool. So I, I played a ton of those two games. Those are the, those are the first two games I ever sunk any real time into. Was that what like your day in the life of Kaz when he was young? Is that what yeah, it was like? Yeah, yeah, in, in junior high and in high school, yeah. You would you would hop on your dinosaur to go home and chop some firewood and then <laughs> you know you can hand bite crank me. the electricity. <laughs> he's not he's not Amish. Well, no, that's why he's got a hand crank for electricity. Oh, okay. <laughs> My mom might qualify as Amish, but I'm not. <laughs> oh, My uh, my wife says that she grew up Amish because they didn't have cable internet or cable TV. I'm like, I don't think that means what you think it means. But <laughs> it's okay. God. That's a really good like first world problem to have, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know I only had 12 channels when I was growing up. Oh, okay. Right. like 12? Uh, Calgon. You kidding me? me? We had four if we were lucky. If the reception from Boston was good, we had four. <laughs> where uh, where were you actually from? I was born in North Carolina and spent my first oh, okay. 10 years there. And then my mom dragged my dad and I kicking and screaming to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, when I was 10. And I lived there until 96 when I moved out to Seattle. 1996, not when you yes. turned 96. <laughs> And he, he's still a mass hole to this day, guys. So. <laughs> I am. Do you am. prefer one place over the other? I mean, you've kind of been in three of the four corners of America. You know, e- each year the the incessant rain gets a little a little harder to handle. But, I mean, of the three places I've spent any significant amount of time, I like Seattle the best. Yeah. But the the, the rain is definitely getting old. No, I'm right there with you. I mean, one of these days we're going to have to have that mythical uh, Pacific Northwest land. Right? So. I'd fly out. That's what everybody says. I mean, we're see if it comes true. I know where to go. I know the cool things to show you all. I haven't said it publicly in Discord, so anybody who was listening gets uh, first access to this information during the pandemic, um, especially with the good graces of the fact that my student loans have been deferred. I've been socking away money to the land. Like, it was 20 bucks a month. It wasn't much. Uh, But, yeah, no, wherever it is, I'm there. Right on. Nice. So, down. Let's do it. Oh, let's wait. Let's wait for everybody. Like I want, I want like ninety-five of America to be vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. But that's just me. Um, yeah. So either way, uh, something a little more cheery. Uh, we we're just speaking of travel. If you can go anywhere uh, on the world, where would it be? New Zealand. New Zealand. Okay, yeah. I kind of agree with you, but why New Zealand for you? 
I, it's just so gorgeous. I I uh, I used to be a big time hiker, so I I have not been a 100% indoor gamer my whole life. That's more of a recent change. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I used to do a lot of hiking and kayaking and that kind of stuff. So I I mean just the natural splendor of New Zealand. It's just so gorgeous. I can get behind that. Yeah, I got a buddy that went there for work. He went there for the, which would have been their spring, I think. He was there, and he said he was there for a good, I think it maybe three months, and he said it was just amazing because he is, he's very, he's a big, like, marathon runner kind of guy, so he's a big outdoorsy hiking and all that kind of stuff, and he said it was just the the best because he would get off of work, and he could literally do anything and you know the country's not too terribly big so if you wanted to go to the mountains or go to the ocean yeah. you know you weren't really far from from any of that kind of stuff and, and the weather and and just the the view of everything was just amazing so yeah no for sure i remember uh Enzap, one of our older nights he posted a bunch of pictures yeah yep. he was traveling around new zealand uh it's mm-hmm. it does look amazing i would like to go there at some point just to visit so. yes so what about any uh any any family life cares Married kids, nope. dogs, cats. Nope. I, uh, I'm a, I'm an only child, and uh, you know, spoiled. Oh, we figured Used out what the problem is. It's because he's an thing. only child. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I have sort of continued that. Yeah. I, I, I got finally after many years of housemates and whatnot. I got my own place all to myself, a little mother-in-law apartment kind of set up, and mm-hmm. everything is exactly where I left it. Everything is precisely <laughs> as clean as it was last time I was I was using whatever part of the house it is and I like uh, it that way. I, I've yeah. you know, I've flirted with getting a dog during the pandemic time since I'm actually home and could take it out for mm-hmm. walks and all that kind of stuff and wouldn't be leaving it, you know, trapped indoors for ten hours a day kind of thing, but mm-hmm. I haven't quite gotten there yet. As I get older, my O C D and like my tolerance for things not being where I left it or clean as clean as I left it. It, it's just getting worse. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. And then my, my, you know, I have two kids and they don't give a fuck where things were. I, right? like, ah, I would have thought that would have like, cured you of your OCD, man, because you just, you can't fight it. You got to give in. Exactly. I would. Okay. I don't, you guys I don't do know you if want. you guys know me very well, but I'm a little stubborn. No. Say it ain't so. <laughs> it's funny. Cause my, my daughter's 10 and she's, she's also very stubborn. And so, you know, something will come up like you know i'll say hey you got to clean your room and she'll be like well i don't want to clean it i want to do it later i'm like well no x until you clean your room and she'll go fine <laughs> i'm like I'm like okay well none of that and my wife's like oh well come on i'm like no she can give in first i'm not giving in first <laughs> and like man it is it is truly like locking horns so i she's only 10 and i can imagine when she's 13 16 like it's gonna be awful <laughs> Don't give up. You have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I believe in you, Jay. You got this. <laughs> we'll see. That's right. I mean, I'm in the same boat with Kaz, right? I'm living by myself in my own place. And uh, it's nice when something's exactly how you left it. Mm-hmm. But flip side, all those dishes in the, uh, <laughs> the, the sink, uh, yeah, I got to clean them all. I mean, I mean sure, the, it's my mess. Mm-hmm. And I should probably not be lazy and wait, you know, two, three days to actually do dishes, but I still got to clean them all. <laughs> See, I, I, uh, you have dishes for two or three days. We need to talk. Yeah. About. Right. I do like, <laughs> I do a plate and a fork a day, man. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and half the time it's paper and plastic. <laughs> it just, it just bypasses the sink, goes right in the dishwasher. <laughs> Just I don't have boom. a dishwasher. I am the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel okay, like I can see one. that then. Yeah. I, I kind of, I, I, like one of my, one of my chores all through high school, I washed all the dishes for the family. So that, you know, I, I, I got my lifetime quota in and I hate washing dishes and I don't have a dishwasher <laughs> either. So I have like perfected the art of cooking using only one pan. Like, you know, it, the, the recipe will call for four different pans at multiple temperatures, and I have figured out a way to make it all in one pan so that I only have one pot to wash at the end of it all. None of oh, this nice. wash three different pots and pans. No way. you got to teach me your ways. Because <laughs> I'll literally use three or four pots and pans to make a dinner. I should actually post in the next one I make in, the, uh, in, the, in the food porn channel. I want to get that, uh, that grail challenge done. Man. Oh, yeah? 
I think I can do it. Go for it, man. Until I got went to work at the ambulance stations, I didn't even know that people put pots and or pans in the dishwasher. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Did you just hand like, wash them? Yeah. And like all of a sudden, like I get to work and, you know, the, the kind of common courtesy is, you know, obviously all the dishes go in the dishwasher and then you empty them in the morning when the next crew comes in. And like I'd come in sometimes and I'm like, why are you putting a pan in the dishwasher? Like, what do you mean? And I was like, do you do that at home? And people be like, yeah. I'm like, oh. I just Revelations. Thought, yeah. I'm like, okay. All right. I'm like, okay. Guess that's a thing. But man, being in my job and going into people's houses, so okay. the first thing you learn is how disgusting people are. <laughs> like not like their their kitchen is on a whole nother level, but like just the whole rest of the house and how they keep themselves too. Like it's just and like I'm not a great example because I'm just so such like an O C D and I like to be clean all the time, you know, yeah. like but so I understand that I'm like the exception to most people but like but it's just walk in and i'm like you just this is your everyday man like this is how people live and it's, it's not and it's not because they're sick right it's not because right. like oh they they have some you know they have chronic cancer and they can't get around very well and like no it's, it's just, just like live. this guy's yeah this guy's oh, just man. a drunk and you know he just i didn't even think of that plates on the floor i'm gonna be standing there like no heart attack hold on you have to wait i gotta clean up first <laughs> right. for the paramedics <laughs> I, I oh, had yeah. uh, I had three friends just after college who rented a house together. They lived there for five and a half or six years. They did not own a vacuum, and the place was shag carpet throughout except the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> the socks must be so crusty. So at they the literally did not vacuum once in five years or more, and I'm horrified at the number of nights I spent in that place. <laughs> oh my gosh so like when they, how did i not catch typhoid or something <laughs> when they wanted to clean their carpets did they just re- replace the carpet i mean I would oh yeah oh there, yeah there was no clean in that place after they moved out it was it was definitely <laughs> it was not a it was not bring in cleaners it was refurb <laughs> i mean that place by the end there was so much rot in the floorboards under the bathroom that you were you were pulling the handle on the slot machine every time you sat on the toilet, whether or not it was going to fall through the floor with you on it. <laughs> I am not kidding. <laughs> oh, man. I'm happy I haven't had an experience quite like that yet. <laughs> I mean, you know, it sounds like a ballroom. I don't, but, <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, man. So outside of gaming, you know, you've talked about, uh, I don't know if that was pre-show or not, but we've talked about D&D and some other stuff. Have you, uh, it, you know, you said you just, you know, big gaming just through and through. So the outside stuff, you know, you talked about, I guess, hiking and things like that. Is there any other big activities you like to do outside of the, the gaming world? I mean, these days it, it, it's all about the gaming. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, I used to do a lot of hiking and I had the extreme good fortune to have my dad and stepmom live in Hawaii for 10 years. And so I spent a, whatever time I could scrap and save for over there with them and did a lot of, you know, kayaking and hiking and exploring the islands and swimming with dolphins and swimming with sea turtles and nice. a little bit of surfing. And so I I don't really know what shifted gears to turn me from a outdoorsy active person to a sit around a table and game kind of guy. But something happened. I guess yeah. huh. age will do that you've... maybe. I don't know. At least you've experienced life, right? Like you've done stuff. It's not like. Yeah. You, yeah. you haven't been outside. You know what the br- fresh air smells like. You just <laughs> yeah. apparently don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I used to. I, I'd like to imagine I could recapture it, but uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So what is what's the transportation situation in Hawaii? Like, how do you get between all the islands? Like, you, swim. you just have to ch- charter your. <laughs> do you just there's, have to like charter your own rides, or how do, how does that work? There's I mean, there's a like, there's Hawaiian Airlines that you know, has the airliners that go to the U.S., but they also have a, a fleet of several hundred puddle jumper planes, you know, six, eight, 12, 20 seaters that just fly back and forth between the islands all day. Okay. And if you've got a big enough boat, you can you can boat between them. The ocean currents get a little hairy, but I'd say it's probably, I don't know, 70% flight, 30% boats. Or swimming if you're mania. 
I, I he's a really good swimmer, man. I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, you, you can almost see one island from the other island on a very, very clear day. Almost, barely, make it out on the horizon a little bit. That little smudge might be a cloud, might be mm-hmm. the island. So uh, if Mania can swim that, I'm uh, I'm really impressed. I mean, I'm not putting money on it. <laughs> give me uh, give me a high quality camera to record me doing it and a green screen, and I bet you I can. <laughs> <clears throat> All of a sudden, like your dog walks by and he's got like a shark <laughs> thing on his back. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> Doubt me now, suckers. <laughs> that's right. Look, oh no, there's a shark. <laughs> Oh, man. So, real quick, Kaz, and the listeners aren't going to be able to see because we have cameras up. Uh, Kaz, I noticed that you have a Green Vegetarian book behind you. I, I do. Are you? I, from, uh, I, I, I took a class in college called the Microbiology of Cancer and AIDS. Oh, okay. And I learned a whole lot of stuff in that class about cancer and what causes it. And as a result of that class, I was a vegetarian for... 15, 16 years, something like that. Oh, wow. Okay. What, uh, what made and that was like during that? the years I learned how to cook and everything. So I, uh, I, most of what I know how to cook is vegetarian just cause that's, you know, when I was learning to cook, that's what I, that's what I ate. Mm-hmm. Do you enjoy cooking? Like, would you consider that another hobby of yours? I go through phases. Yeah, I can, I, I can see that for sure. Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It comes and goes. As long as it can fit in one pan, that's the Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, that's a limiting factor. It really is. It, uh, <laughs> it, it really cuts down on the variety that I can cook. Not going to lie. <laughs> My one pan meals are usually like hamburger helper or something. <laughs> well, most Which of mine I, I are, are by, necess- by necessity vegetarian. So I... I, I, I can give you some tips sometime. <laughs> I mean, I love cooking, so I'll take it. I've been trying to learn how to eat more veggies. My girlfriend gets mad at me sometimes. I'm a meditarian. I don't think I, like, I would literally starve to death. I'm like, all right, all you have is veggies. I'd be like, well, guess, guess it's over, guys. <laughs> guess I'll <laughs> die. Nice knowing you. Go on without me. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> oh, man. I was talking with one of my friends, and we went to this restaurant, and he ordered a meat salad, right? And he was thinking that it was going to be... Like there was no lettuce? Well, I mean, I'll get to that part. Okay. So he was thinking it was going to be a salad with a lot of meat toppings. You know, lettuce, right. romaine, whatever, spinach, and mm-hmm. bacon, ham, whatever else goes on top, a bunch of meat. But no, there was literally no vegetable. <laughs> like the lettuce was replaced with beef strips. <laughs> and then <laughs> there were strips of bacon. I, I mean... I'll take I, I the heart attack on a plate, please. Yeah. Holy cow. I love meat as much as the next guy. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not a fan of bacon, though. I'm just not. Whoa. Whoa. Hold yeah, on. Here. Okay. Wait a minute. Who I, I put up guy? with all the old jokes, but now, man, I don't know. <laughs> We're I drawing you just the line a, bacon. <laughs> you crossed an internet bridge there. There's no coming back from that. <laughs> so you don't have to agree with me. But no one bacon, agrees with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jay, did you say you do or don't? No, I said no one. No one on earth agrees with you. That's even okay. vegetarians. <laughs> even vegetarians. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I am not lying. Bacon is what got me off the vegetarian wagon. Oh, that was the God. first meat I consumed. I could not resist the temptation any longer. But does it have to be on everything? No, no. I, yes. I, yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I mean, know, I've seen like bacon ice cream. Come on, what the hell is that? Yeah. Bacon yeah, ice cream? Okay. Come on. Oh, man. And, like, I think when you're cooking bacon, it smells absolutely divine. But then when you eat it, it's always a little bit of a disappointment, at least for me. And that's okay. I'll be the odd man out. That's fine. There's probably an island that banned bacon and has population (laughs) zero. I'll move there. I mean, you're going to have a hard time at the land because, you know, as Jay knows, making bacon pancakes. That's right. (laughs) Oh yeah, I'll be around. I'll have a few pieces. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so you, you'll so you'll you'll suffer through eating a couple of pieces of bacon. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good way to say it. I do not mind suffering through bacon. <laughs> I'm gonna get so much shit in the Discord. For this. Yes, you are. 
I'm looking say, forward to I know it. you're trying for the grail, but I, I might take a pass on posting in the food board channel after this. Give it, <laughs> give it a couple months to cool down, maybe. <laughs> Well, uh, I am looking up bacon memes, and there is a bacon fact number 18, and bacon is healthier than crystal meth, so if that changes your mind. <laughs> that is absolutely true. That's, true. <laughs> that's, that's like the meme that's like, here's how much of what food is in a bottle of soda, and it like shows a you know, normal 20-ounce bottle of Coke, and it shows that there's six and a half donuts worth of sugar in that Coke. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> top comment. All I'm gathering from this is donuts is healthier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's a really good thing to gather from that. The glass is half full, man. Oh, exactly. Right, so do. <laughs> oh man. Well, speaking. All right. Of, well, we've successfully gone off the rails. You got a you got a good way to get us back, Mania. Yeah, actually, because we're talking about sweets. Right, and I don't know, maybe Gambit and Jay, maybe you're tired of me asking this question, but I love it. I love this question so much. Kaz, what's your favorite dessert? Carrot cake. Oh, my God. Ooh, I like carrot cake, too. I, 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 I'm I, not usually a cake guy because the frosting is just too much pure sugar for me. But carrot cake with that. that cream cheese frosting that's, you know, not quite as teeth-achingly sweet, that that does it. No, I can agree with that. Carrot cake's pretty good. Have you, have you ever had... Bacon carrot cake? God, no. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you have some? I was going to say, why do you dare suggest even... What what, what what? horrible adulteration would that be? (laughs) Man. All right, so uh, one of these days I'm going to try to make some. Because I don't think it's a real thing yet. But I'm going to become internet famous for it, and I'll send you some and let you try it. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> you're gonna have to get one on one of those shows where they have like the food challenge you know where they eat all this crazy yeah like, oh, you know God. local the local stuff and this could be uh local mania decadence that's the, right the bacon carrot cake i'll, I'll have gordon the ramsay in, on as a yeah. special guest so he can yell at me <laughs> what is this shit your bacon isn't weaved properly <laughs> oh man that would be that'd be entertaining i don't know I don't even know what that'd mm-hmm. be possible, though. I don't know cooking well enough. It's something that's up and coming for me, you know, one of my hobbies. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. I don't know if I'm brave enough to li- literally do my own thing and stuff bacon into something. See, I, I do like cooking. The, the problem is is I'm such a picky eater. Like, I, I've worked in a bunch of nice restaurants, and I've waited tables, and I've been a prep cook and a line cook and some other things. And so, like, I understand the fundamentals of cooking and like how to cook certain things and i and i enjoy it but then i just don't eat a lot of it which sucks like sometimes because i'm like ah i do enjoy cooking this or making that but i don't eat you know whatever that is same thing with wine like i don't drink any wine but throughout my career waiting tables we always had to drink certain wines so we could understand it and when people would ask you know when a customer would ask like oh what you know do you like this wine or what is this wine you know is this wine you know, what's the flavor? I don't remember now because it's been 20 years. But, but yeah, so we always had to know. But I still don't like the taste of wine at all and don't ever drink it. But, yeah, cooking has always been something that, that I've enjoyed. But with my five things I eat, it's pretty easy to, I, I, to cook. I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, it was, uh, not going to lie, it was rough being a vegetarian because when you break it down, I really actually don't like the majority of vegetables. There's like, you know, seven or eight that I really dig and everything <laughs> else I can take it or leave it. So, you know, real talk though, roasted broccoli, absolutely delicious. It is hands down my favorite vegetable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't know that I've had it roasted. Dude. I think it's steamed a lot, but I don't, I don't know oh. that I've ever roasted it. I used to my steam wife. it a lot. Um, it is super easy to roast it, right? Just spread it on a cookie sheet, put some olive oil, salt, and pepper on top of it. Put your oven at like 400 degrees and put it on the top rack for about 20-ish minutes or until it's okay. as crispy as you want it to be. Yeah. So good. Yep. That's, my wife's been doing that recently. She does a whole bunch. She does like broccoli and carrots and I done something carrots. else. I've done green beans. I forget. Yeah. Those she, are does, I, she does two or three veggies, I think. And yeah. And then she, yeah, she really likes it. So she'll, she'll do that and add it to other meals and stuff. Oh, so. yeah, for sure. You can't just yeah. have side veggies for a whole meal. I mean, I guess some people could. I mean, it's America, right? Nobody's stopping them. Right. You know? I mean, KFC had that heart stop, whatever the thing was. It was like, wow. Oh, the two have? pieces KFC. of chicken that instead made a sandwich? Of, yeah, instead of, a, instead of buns, it was chicken. Yep. But then what was in the middle? Like a burger? I forget I, what was I, in the I middle. Vaguely bacon. Know what you're it was about. bacon. 
bacon was of in course the middle, it was bacon. and then, <laughs> and then two pieces <laughs> of chicken with a bun. Yeah, the fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, as much fun as that bacon is, one last <laughs> thing. <laughs> Uh, have you two tried those home cooking services where they deliver you the meal and you have to cook it? I, Something like uh, HelloFresh Fresh and those kinds yeah. of things where they like, yeah, where they send it to you. I have not because I, you know, frankly, like we just wouldn't get any use out of it. Like it looks fine when they show it on TV and you've got like a family of four all helping and cooking and making something healthy, but I'm over there just making chicken strips or something. <laughs> nah. So yeah, my girlfriend and I, we bought into it. And honestly, it's probably the best thing ever because a little pricey. I will agree. Yeah, and yeah that's what's helped me A little me back. pricey. It's steep. Yep. But the cool thing is, is they give you a recipe card. Mm-hmm. So you have all the ingredients and what you have to do with them. So like, if you really liked a meal from there, you can cancel, keep the card, and then just go to the store and buy your own shit. Right, right. So that's pretty handy. Um, but I've learned how to cook a lot of things, and that's where the roasted broccoli came from. Um, what I also oh, like nice. about it, is the fact that the portions, the serving sizes, are really good sizes for two people, which worked out really good for me and my girlfriend, right? Jay, with you and your family, maybe not, and Kaz, it might be a little a little much for one person. Yeah, um, yeah. But that worked out really well. Um, and if you're like me, I absolutely hate leftovers. Me too. Hate leftovers, and nobody understands why. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, because why do I want to reheat something when I know it's going to taste better fresh? <laughs> there is there the only one thing that I will ever reheat is pizza, and that's it. Like if we go to a restaurant, and like my wife, every time she orders something, she eats half of it because she's going to eat half of it like the next day. And I'm like, no, like if I don't whatever I, I don't finish it, it's just gone. Yep. Like I don't For ever. Me, it depends on the food. Yet. There's there's stuff that reheats, but there's definitely stuff that doesn't. But like no uh, potato bread. <clears throat> Chili. Chili's almost always better the next day after the flavors have mingled overnight. Well, that's because it's pretty much a trash can of stuff anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good like, trash can of stuff, okay. though. I have his two-year-old that, that, That's like a Rich Carlton dumpster, beans. man, not out behind the stop and shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I know potato oh. products don't do well reheated. Ritz Carlton dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so growing up, did you guys have um, – how were your parents at mealtimes? So were they the kind of like the stereotypical like TV parents or like you can't get up until you eat all your veggies? Like did you guys ever have that or how, how was your meals growing up at home? Actually, for me, I was the one who instituted a dinner table. Right, like we had a dining dining room and a dining table, right? We just used it for other stuff. But um, for the longest time, my whole family, we sat in front of the TV with our dinner, you know, whatever it may be, and we watched some television show that was on. Um, and then, I don't know, late teens, for some reason, I was just like, you know what? Like, I want to spend some family time. So I sat down at the dinner table without telling my mom and dad, and they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> I want to start sitting at the dinner table. I mean, you guys are more than welcome to join us. We can have... We can have, like, a family time with it. And at first, they were like, no, we'll let you do your thing, right? So I was literally <laughs> sitting there for, like, nerd, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I was sitting there for, I don't know, maybe five minutes, and they both got up, and they were like, this is just too weird. We'll sit with you. Because, like, they were so self-conscious about me sitting by myself. Like, I was as happy as could be. Like, whatever, I'm doing my thing. And y'all can join me if you want. That's cool. And then it actually yeah. turned into, like, a family thing. Like, that was family time. Hey, you did a so. good thing, man. Yeah, right. I like I don't really recall like just day to day eating with my family, but my family was big into the you know the big Thanksgiving feast, have you know eighteen people over kind of thing. Or so I I remember I remember the times we had lots of guests and big gatherings. Like uh, my favorite food growing up was tacos, and so we would have tacos, and we'd have you know eight or ten people over there, and just a massive feast of tacos kind of thing. So I remember a lot of those. I don't I don't don't recall just the day to day meal stuff though. Really, that's interesting. So so nothing. So I I you know I've often described my memory as kind of like a uh, it's one of those endless loop security tape kind of things where. After you get to year six uh, of the five-year loop, year one starts getting erased kind of thing. So I am sort of 
unique amongst all my friends in that I don't remember a lot of my childhood. Like, before age 10, I don't remember a thing. Yeah, I, I think I have a really bad memory, so I, I feel like I just wouldn't remember that anyway. Like, maybe very, like, I remember I broke my arm in second grade. Like, I remember that, but I don't remember, you know, any, like, normal day-to-day -day events. Like, yeah. if, you know, we're asking about family stuff like this. Like, I, yeah, but I just have a terrible memory in general, but... Mine's um, pretty good, but it just it's just short-term, I think. I, I mean, the older I get, the more... The more, the, the further back I could remember. But, you know, anything before mm -hmm. age 10, I got nothing. Anything in high school, it's just fuzzy bits and pieces here and there kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling a little bad about myself because I don't remember anything before age, like, 12 or 13. Like, I didn't have a life before high school. I was born and went to the ninth grade. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think... Um, what really helps me, like the last, I would say the last at least 10 years since I've had kids, but probably a little bit before that, like the advent of digital photography from like the, you know, the Sony handy cams and then cell phones and all this kind of stuff that I have a giant photo library of like 50,000 photos. And so wow. I, I mark photos as favorites. I have photos, like key photos that I really like. They scroll through as like my screensavers. And so I'll see pictures of my kids growing up, pictures of me and my wife before we were married, or pictures of, of things I did or stuff, pictures that I took from years and years ago. And constantly seeing those photos, even though it might be, you know, two or 3,000 different photos that keep cycling, it, it kind of re-imprints it on my brain. And so a lot of the stuff, especially like with my kids and family, there's events that I see all the time and it's, it's kept it fresh right. in my brain, you know, just having that, the, the photo version of it, I think. And so I wonder if, you know, the next generation of people won't have such a hard time with, with memory potentially, you know, cause since they have, you know, all this video and pictures and, and everything else, you know, so, so I don't know, or maybe we're just all old and, you know, we can't remember <laughs> anything. Maybe a little I, bit of both. I, uh, yeah. I, I've been talking to my mom a lot more lately, and uh, it's funny. We're, we'll talk about stuff, and we'll talk about the same events and how we remember them completely different. Like, we both witness the exact same thing, and we <laughs> tell two completely different stories about what happened in that moment kind of thing. Mm -hmm. My dad is, uh, he loves still stories, and he has a bunch of crazy stories. And all of his stories growing up, I have heard dozens and dozens of times but every time he tells it it's different and it's like <laughs> embellished like yeah instead of instead of it was two guys that were wanted to fight it was all of a sudden it's 10 guys that you know i was fighting you know so like every time this the story uh story gets a little you know better or worse depending on how yeah, he wants I got, to tell it I, I got a friend who's uh who's very much like that mm -hmm. I, I think the most i ever embarrassed him we were at a party and he goes off into this story and he's embellishing the hell out of it. And he's about three quarters of the way through. I'm like, all right, I, I, I got to stop you there. I, I, I just can't take it anymore. First off, it didn't happen like that. It happened like this. Second off, that didn't happen to you. That happened to me. That's my story <laughs> that you're embellishing and telling completely wrong. You weren't even there. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, that's kind of one of those things where you hear a story so often. You, you, oh, yeah. You feel like you you were there and yeah. uh, just super quick story from my childhood. I was super young when I was a kid. I cried at everything. Um, and apparently my, my mom was holding me and talking to my grandma and my grandma took off her glasses and made her look completely different. So I like started screaming. Um, and now keep in mind, I was like maybe three years old. I don't actually remember that, but I've heard the story told to me so many times. It feels so real. Like I remember it like it's yesterday. It's just crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. I have friends and family that they'll remember, you know, going like my wife, my wife, my wife remembers like her kindergarten teacher. And I'm that like, so weird to me. I couldn't tell you. I may be a couple of high school teachers names and that's, that's pretty much it. But yeah, she, you know, she knows all of her, grade school teachers and like all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, man, like my memory, my brain doesn't work like that. Yeah. Like I'll tell you in any, any halo character you want to know about, like I can rattle it off. Like, yeah. We can talk about that, but I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you about, you know, teachers and, and stuff, but that's my problem with memory has always been, even in school, if it was a subject that I didn't care about, like I, I, I would read the whole chapter, 
you know, I'd read a whole chapter of whatever was assigned and I would close the book and you could quiz me on it and I would get an F. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I, 100%. You got to no be idea. interested in it for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. just the way it works. Well, yeah. and it's totally what what you're what you're tuned into to remember kind of thing because I, I remember almost nothing from high school, but the game my friends and I played when we weren't playing D&D, you know, when we're, you know, driving to the movies or whatever was the movie quote game. And so, like, I can almost recite, you know, movies from beginning to end, movies that came out in the 80s. And to this day, I remember the most obscure lines from, you know, Ghostbusters or Top Gun or whatever, you know. But I couldn't tell you any of the classes I took in college beyond that biology of cancer and AIDS one I mentioned. You know, it's like (laughs) I was an English major. I took all semester on Shakespeare at one point. I took all semester on Norse mythology, but... What the hell were those classes called? I have no idea. Who was the professor? No idea. Couldn't tell you. Anyway, Kaz, you talk real good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think he does. He does. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, Kaz, I want to finish out. Mina, do you want to ask the guilty pleasure question? Oh, we missed that, didn't we? Yeah. All right. Let's go like... to it real quick. Uh, Kaz, uh, just general media, pop culture, books, movies, music. Um What's your guilty pleasure? Hmm. Nothing jumps to mind. I is it, is it correcting my grammar? <laughs> no, that's just a straight out pleasure. Uh, <laughs> he owns it. There's no guilt in there. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I watch an awful lot of cop shows. Like I, I, detective or yeah, like cops, yeah, like police procedural stuff. Everything from Law and Order to I don't know. Blue Bloods or I yeah so I I I don't really have an interest in cops or solving crime or whatever but I just tend to watch a whole bunch of shows about murder I don't know why it's kind of weird Forensic Files I got you see I could see Kaz as a t- detective I could see him like putting like a puzzle together and like figuring out who the murderer was like I don't know I think I think you'd be good at it I could I could definitely see you doing that Oh, snap. You know, Kaz, if that does sound good to you, and I don't know if you want to spend the money on this, but I've been interested in it. Um, There's a service, and it's a monthly subscription box, right? So, like, every month they send you a box, and it's got a bunch of shit in it. Um, This one, though, I think it's called, uh, like, To Catch a Murderer or something. And they send you, like, newspaper clippings and other evidence, pieces of evidence. Interesting. And, like like a story and a diary or something and you yeah. got to look at all of it and piece it together and see if you can figure out who the murderer was uh i'll have to i might be wrong on the name i'll have to look it up it's and get back to you hunt hunt a killer yeah that. interesting i wonder how so, that would be and uh that actually sounds kind of cool we, we used to have these monthly board game days of you know 10 or 12 people and we play eight hours of board games kind of thing and the games that i'm the worst at universally are the social deduction games Love them. Like the, you know, the Absolute clue and them. that kind of stuff. In any of the social deduction stuff, I'm I'm just lost in. I love that movie, though. Clue is like one of, probably like my top ten Don't think movies. I've ever seen it, actually. <sighs> it's so good. The one from like 90-something? Yeah, I think it's either, I think it might be late 80s, like 88, 89, or yeah, early 90s. But yeah, it's, it's, right up it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think we are going to leave it there. Appreciate you coming on the show, Kaz Mania. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Oh, buddy. Thanks for having Appreciate me, it. Kaz. Thanks for coming. And listeners, thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. you got to say thanks for watching. You're filling in for Gambit, remember? Is that what he normally says? Yeah, he always screws up. <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll talk. Don't worry about it. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.